Fiat's answer to combating emissions and fuel consumption is the style conscious 500 city car. Smart, small and perfectly formed. Just what exactly might the world's cleanest and greenest four-seater petrol-powered production car be like? Your expectations might not be high, mine certainly wouldn't be. Something driven by battery packs perhaps, or possibly a vehicle so feebly powered that it has struggled to show a bike courier a clean set of tailpipes. So what if it looked like this? was powered by a perky 85 brake horsepower engine and capable of rest to 60 in just 11 seconds. This is the cleverest twin air version of Fiat's cheeky little 500, a city runabout that's fun as well as frugal and a design that's now developed into the kind of car that Fiat fans always hoped it would be following its launch in 2007. Since then we've seen the option of an open roofed 500C body style Frantic a bath branded hot hatch versions, a stop start system to make the continuing four cylinder petrol and diesel variants more frugal and subtle tweaks to improve both the ride and the handling. But none of this is quite as clever or significant as the two cylinder twin air petrol engine that's in the model that we're going to test here. There's even a pleasing historical symmetry in that the original 1957 Fiat 500 had two cylinder power, though back then it generated just 13 brake horsepower. With seven times as much power, this car is a pleasanter prospect that in this form seeks to dominate the city car market. Turn the engine on this twin air powered 500 and at last in this car, there's the kind of engine note to properly suit the cheeky retro looks. A putter putter sound that seems to be exactly the sort of thing you'd have heard from the 1957 original nipping through the back streets of Naples. Here at last in the metal is the car this should always have been. Not that there isn't a continuing place in the range for the four cylinder engines that are, are still there. The 69 brake horsepower 1.2 litre petrol unit that slots below twin air motoring and the 100 brake horsepower 1.4 litre petrol unit that uh, is pitched in just above it and large 235 brake horsepower in the whole hatch a bath model. You can also see why some 500 buyers might continue to prefer the 1.3 litre 95 brake horsepower multi-jet diesel which on paper matches the twin air's frugality but in day-to-day -day reality probably betters it. But for all that I can't get beyond the cleverness of this version. Two cylinders to my mind is the kind of thing that would generate a little more power than you get on the average sit-on lawnmower and that's pretty much all you did get in the original 1950s version of this car. Yet here Two cylinders is enough to generate 85 braked horses. That's enough to see 60 blow by from rest in 11 seconds on the way to an academic maximum of 108 miles an hour. Pretty much the same kind of performance that you get from the diesel version of this car. Why you'd pay more to get less pulling power from the 100 brake horsepower 1.4 litre petrol model, I'm not quite sure. And it's that pulling power you really appreciate in the nip and tuck of urban traffic where this twin air engine's clever technology allows it to breathe more easily so that peak torque arrives very early in the rev range. That means that you end up palming the slick shifting high mounted gear change around much less than you might expect to. It's true that if you work this two cylinder engine hard it can get a bit vocal but even then the gruff slightly throbby engine note is characterful rather than unpleasant and around town refinement is more than acceptable. If you are urban bound and especially keen on cutting costs then there's the option of pressing this eco button on the dash which cuts power, cuts torque from 145 to 100 newton meters which can be a bit disconcerting if you forget you've left it on and then suddenly need to dive for a gap in the traffic. I'd leave the thing alone if I was you. A better option for townies would be to specify the extra cost dual logic uh, automatic gearbox that's uh, it's a kind of manual gearbox without a clutch unless you like all that left foot pumping of course. As for the rest well most of the underpinnings are based on Fiat's other more conventional city car offering the five-door Panda which is no bad thing as that car remains a pretty fun steer. 
The 500 uh, is a bit stiffer though, one reason why early versions of this car had a bit of a choppy ride, an issue since solved by tweaks to the rear axle. You can still throw the thing about on country lanes, but uh, it now soaks up small urban bumps much better, so everyone's happy. The more fearsome electric power steering setup is welcome too, and as before, there's a city mode function. It activates when you press this eco button on the dash to increase the assistance given at lower parking speeds. Urban friendly through and through, you see. Who couldn't love a face like this? In seeking to update and indeed resize, possibly the cutest shape ever to clothe four wheels, the Italian designers took on a huge responsibility. But the sustained and continuing demand for this car, both in fixed top and 500c convertible guises, suggests that they got it spot on. This remains a car that makes people smile, not least its driver, when the time comes to park up. At 1.65 metres wide, 1.49 metres high and 3.55 metres long, this is a car that can slot into spaces that even a Mini would have to avoid. If you opt for the 500C variant rather than the fixed top model that I've got here, you get what amounts to a full length canvas sunroof, which electrically retracts into a concertina bundle just above the boot. Now, whatever 500 model you choose, uh, it invites a high degree of personalization via a myriad of trim and specification options. But whatever you choose, it's almost certain to dovetail deliciously with the very well-judged blend of retro chic and contemporary design that you'll find inside. Lovely details are everywhere, your eyes falling first on the Panda Source dashboard with its iconic 500 badging. It's a dash that can be specified in body colour. Before you take in other details like the chrome ringed vents and the circular head restraints, the steering wheel, adjustable for height, though not for reach, can feel a little large on first acquaintance. And there's a lot to take in from the singular circular instrument dial in front of you, with readouts for speed, revs and fuel usage running along similar planes. Once you adjust though, it all works very well, with only the position of the seat height adjuster for the driver. It's actually positioned just where the handbrake should be offering any kind of lasting annoyance. It's all very well screwed together though by the Polish factory, and there's actually quite a lot of oddment space for a small city car, with a usefully deep shelf just in front of the passenger, a pop-out cubby by the driver's knee, with another cubby by the ignition key here, and all the usual door bins and cup holders. Even the passenger seat cushion folds forward to reveal a useful stowage compartment. In the back, larger adults will find their elbows making full use of the indentations cut into the side panels, and taller ones may find their heads slightly brushing the roof, but for most, there ought to be just enough space for two people on short to medium journeys. And the boot is bigger than you might expect. It's 185 litres, just about big enough for the weekly shop, provided that your brood isn't the size of the Von Trapp family. If it is, then you might like to leave them at home and push forward this rear seat, which as you can see on a base model like this one doesn't split fold, to free up 550 litres of fresh air. Expect to pay somewhere in the 10 to 14,000 pound bracket for your Fiat 500, with an 800 pound premium on the model you're looking at if you want the dual logic semi-automatic gearbox. Now, if you want to progress from the entry level 69 brake horsepower 1.2 litre petrol version to this twin air model, you'll need a premium of about uh, 1200 pounds over the basic entry level version. Pay it if you possibly, possibly can. Paying another 1300 pounds on top of that to go to the 1.3 litre multi-jet diesel seems to me to make far less sense. Now, in terms of comparisons with rivals, well, you might think that 10 to 14,000 pounds is quite a lot to pay for a small little city car, but it's actually only about a thousand pounds more model for model than you'd pay for a far less fashion conscious rival, like say Citroen C1, Toyota's Ego, Peugeot's 107 or Ford's KA. Unless you uh, save a few hundred pounds and buy a smaller Smart 4 II, trendier town tots all cost more. You're looking at about a thousand pounds more over the cost of uh, this Fiat 500 if you want something like a Toyota 
IQ and about £2,000 more if you want to buy an equivalent Mini. Whichever 500 model you choose, whether it's the entry level 69 brake horsepower 1.2 litre petrol, this 85 brake horsepower two cylinder twin air petrol, the 1.4 litre petrol with either 100 or 135 brake horsepower, or the 95 brake horsepower 1.3 litre multi jet diesel, you should find your Fiat to be reasonably well equipped, whether you choose this fixed top or the 500C open top version. Now, split folding rear seats, air conditioning and ESP stability control don't make the standard rotor or the standard tally for basic versions, but all models do get uh, color-coded bumpers, power steering, electric mirrors and a CD MP3 stereo. Most laudably, Fiat hasn't skimped on the airbag tally. In a class where many rivals routinely force you to pay extra for side or curtain airbags, this 500 offers seven airbags even in its most basic form. Anti-lock brakes with electronic brake force distribution are there to make sure that hopefully you'll never need to use them. One especially nice option is Fiat's Blue and Me infotainment system, which features uh, wheel-mounted controls and voice activation control for the stereo, and also has features that can monitor your driving style and suggest improvements for peak efficiency. There's, uh, in addition, a Blue and Me TomTom -tom navigation system with a touchscreen that integrates phone and navigation functions in one neat removable package. Fiat's own figures make a compelling case for this Twin Air 500 variant. Compared to the conventional 1.2 litre four-cylinder petrol model, it uh, manages a 23% improvement in power, yet cuts emissions and fuel consumption by 15%, leading to 68.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and a CO2 emissions figure of just 95 grams per kilometre. That's uh, slightly better than even the diesel 500 model can manage. You can even fractionally improve these figures if you opt for the extra cost dual logic semi-automatic gearbox. But whether you can replicate these kind of returns in everyday motoring is more debatable. To help uh, customers try, Fiat has installed a stop-start system which cuts the engine in traffic or at the lights, a gear shift change indicator and an eco button on the dashboard that cuts the, uh, the torque, the pulling power in urban motoring for better fuel returns. What else? Well, uh, this car in twin air form will be exempt from the London congestion charge and it'll incur zero road tax due to its uh, greenness, due to its efficiency. It'll be cheap to insure too with groupings running from 5 to 15 and residual values are also higher than you might expect for a small affordable Fiat. When it was launched half a century ago, the original Fiat 500 was powered by a two-cylinder engine and it was the perfect engine for a perfect city car. With the same layout now installed in this modern version, going for an Italian is an option now that's difficult to ignore in this sector of the market. This car was always cute, now it's clever too, at least in two-cylinder twin air form. In delivering more power, yet offering lower fuel bills and emissions, this engine is as sophisticated as anything you'll find in a supercar. It's all about working smarter rather than harder, and that's something we can all buy into.